Let's take a look at what this problem is asking. So we have a 20 kilogram child, slides on a three meter high playground slide. She starts from rest and her speed at the bottom is two meters per second. What energy transfers and transformations occurred in the slide? What is the total change in thermal energy of the slide and the seat of her pants? Well, clearly this is a problem we want to treat by thinking about energy and energy transformations and transfers. This is a conservation of energy problem. And it looks like this, okay? She is going down a slide, so she starts here at the top. And we're going to assume she's motionless at the top, and then she's going to accelerate down the slide. She ends up at the bottom. And at the bottom, she's moving at 2.0 meters per second. At the start of the problem, she's 3.0 meters above where she's going to finish. Okay, so she's raised by a distance of three meters and she's moving two meters per second at the bottom. Now let's think about the transformations of energy that are happening here. As she slides down the slide, she's losing potential energy. That's why she speeds up because some of the lost potential energy goes to kinetic energy. But think about this. If she fell from a height of three meters, she would hit the ground at a lot faster than two meters per second. And so most of the lost potential energy is going to end up in another form. And in fact, where most of it goes is into thermal energy. And so there will be a change in thermal energy. And this makes sense because you know when you go down a slide, if you remember back to your playground days, the seat of your pants heats up. It's noticeable. Okay, and if you do it a lot, uh, and if you have high friction trousers, um, you'll definitely sense this. So our first assessment is this result make. I mean, the question makes sense in terms of our experience. Now let's do some more preparation. We're going to assume this is an isolated system. There's nobody pushing her. Okay, there's nobody pushing her, and so we're going to assume it's an isolated system. And our basic rule for conservation of energy for an isolated system is this, the kinetic energy plus the potential energy. And normally we have two forms of potential energy, gravitational and spring, but there's only gravitational potential energy here. So I'm gonna call U, where I'm writing U, what I mean is this, it's just equal to gravitational potential energy because there isn't any spring potential energy. So our final kinetic energy plus our final potential energy is plus the change in thermal energy is equal to her initial kinetic energy plus her initial potential energy. Now let's do one more thing before we start into solving the problem. We can do some simplifications of this equation. Her initial kinetic energy is zero because we assume she starts at rest, so this term goes out of the equation. She ends up three meters below where she started. If we take this as our zero of potential energy, we can say her final potential energy is zero. So that term goes out of the equation. And as a result, we end up with a very straightforward equation. It's just this. The final potential energy plus the change in thermal energy is equal to her initial potential energy. I'm going to rewrite it this way. Her final potential energy is just equal to the final kinetic energy plus the change in thermal energy. And this makes sense because we said her potential energy turns into kinetic energy and thermal energy. And so in terms of our understanding about the way the problem is going, our equation that we get here makes sense. Now, before we start our solution, I'm going to think about this. We also said that most of the energy goes into thermal energy, so I'm going to expect this term to be bigger than this term. And this term should be big enough that it will produce a noticeable change in temperature. And we'll go ahead and use that to assess our results at the end. Is there a solution? Okay, the first part is basically just to recall what we said. When energy transfers and transformations occur in the slide, she loses central potential energy. And potential, potential energy turns into kinetic energy, energy, energy and thermal, and thermal energy. energy. Okay, so she's, so she's losing energy, potential energy, increasing, increasing kinetic energy, increasing, increasing thermal. thermal. So the potential, so the potential energy basically is transforming, transforming into these two forms right here. All set. All set. Now let's do part, let's do part, 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 part of the solve this relationship right here. But I'm going to rewrite it right to solve the change in thermal energy because that's what we're trying to find. And the change in thermal energy is just equal to the initial potential energy minus the final kinetic energy, which makes sense in terms of 
What we're saying she loses is potential energy, picks up some kinetic, anything left over is thermal energy. Perfect. Now her kinetic and potential energy is just M times G times H, that's her basic relationship. The kinetic energy is one half times M times V squared. And we know numbers for these different things, okay? We know that her mass is 20 kilograms. G is 9.8 meters per second squared. The height that she starts from is 3.0 meters. Again, her mass is 20 kilograms. The speed that she ends up at is 2.0 meters per second. So we have all the numbers that we need to be able to calculate these energies. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. M times G times H, if we work that out, is 500 and 88 joules. This is a two significant figure problem, but I'm keeping three significant figures because this is an intermediate stage. One half mv squared, that's her kinetic energy at the end of the, of the run, that's only 40 joules. Now here's a quick assessment. We said that most of the energy goes to thermal energy, and the kinetic energy is a small component. And in fact, that's what we find here. The kinetic energy that she has is very small compared to the thermal energy. So again, that's another check mark in our assessment box here. Um, our problem's making sense. The difference of these two, I'm going to round it to two significant figures, is 550 joules. That's the thermal energy increase of the slide and the seat of her pants. And in fact, most of it is probably going to go into the seat of her pants. And if that's true, just think about how much of warming that's going to cause. This amount of energy, um, well, it takes about 4,000 joules to raise the temperature of a kilogram of water by one degree Celsius. Okay, so there's a certain amount of her that's gonna be in contact with the slide, and ultimately it's gonna warm up her legs. So this is enough to raise, you know, a kilogram of tissue by a fraction of a degree, something you would notice, but not enough to make you uncomfortable and certainly not enough to cause any damage. So we can, do as our final piece of the assessment, say this number makes sense in terms of our understanding of the way the world works.